This is our meeting on SAP. We'll go around the table, identify for the record. Pete. Pete Peterson, Assembly. Ernie Hall. Jimmy Bill Evans. Aye. Dick Trady. I'm Kate Kyer, CFO. Lance Ahern, CFO. Ann Reed, Program Manager. Kate, I'll turn the time over to your staff and you. Thank you. So on the agenda, the first item I'd like to do is review with you the agenda. Um, we're going to give an abbreviated project manager report today um, because we want to talk to you in more depth about some of the other items. So Ann is going to give you a very brief project manager report. We're going to go over project financials. I'm not sure how much of the project financials you've seen in the past. I try to, um, we both work, uh, the controller is going to take over the project financials and we'll give you a um, more detailed analysis of that in the future, but we tried to give you more detail than I think you've seen before. I talk about the $3 million financing that we have on the agenda and why we've asked you at this time for that $3 million financing. I'm going to go over the Peloton contract with you, which is before you on Tuesday, talk to you about the SAP quality assessment that's part of the Mayor's Initiative and SAP license issues that are also going to be before you um, this coming up Tuesday. So Anne? So this is a slide that you've seen in the past. We have made um, progress since our last report. The finance procurement data conversion in cycle one was at 99%. We managed to tie up all the loose ends on that and complete it. It's at 100%. Our cycle two data conversion was at 52%. We are at 66%. We are currently at the point of um, estimating the uh, amount of work it will take to get uh, project inception to date information for capital projects and grants in order to have seamless reporting for the assembly and others going forward once we go live. So that one is taking a little bit more time for this data conversion cycle. We are doing a full volume work test which was requested by the team in order to uh, ensure that it will work as it was configured and that is now been identified at over a hundred different tasks and we will be starting that as soon as the environment is prepped up and ready to go. Our organizational change management which is readying the business for this change. Our super user training is continuing and we I believe we're on project systems and accounts receivable this week. The employee relations payroll activities, we're still in our cycle one. We have our FAB five, as the team has started to call them, our five design issues. We are almost at the end of completing the, the unit testing on three of those five, and mm -hmm. anticipate finishing integration test cycle one, which were the pay periods 26, one, two, and three in November. And then we would move into integration testing cycle two, which has four more pay periods in it, before we would start parallel payroll testing. And currently that's where this project is sitting. So if I may, Mr. Chairman, Go ahead, um, I heard Mr. Evans' response last time I was here that the red, green, blue was not particularly meaningful. Um, it's not particularly meaningful to me either. So we're trying to find a different way to present where this project is so that you could kind of look at it and have a better sense of what it's going to mean long term. We haven't got there yet because we need to gather up data, a data mechanism, a gathering mechanism, and figure out how to put it forward. But you will see a different methodology for apprising you of where we are. I don't have it done yet. I'm still in my 60 days. Hey, Mr. Browski has a question for you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Um, Actually, it's for Anne, if you could. So um, with all the data conversion cycles and all the testing that you've done, is there anything um, glaring that has hampered the progress or do you expect is going to hamper the progress? Or what are the red zone? What are the, okay, I won't use red. What are the problem spots that you've found that you think are going to be significant issues in these cycle testings that we just discussed? I think with the data conversion on the financial side, which is where we're sitting now, uh, we've already gone through the integration testing there, so with the basic functionality of that particular set of modules, we know works because we've gotten through two very difficult sections of that. 
the data conversion, we got managed to get through that great big huge hump that I was talking to you about in June and July about all the profit and loss and having all those crosswalks so we know where inside PeopleSoft it goes inside SAP. We are through that piece. Now what we're hitting is exactly how we're going to do budgets and grants in order to make sure that we have this seamless reporting and what the business truly needs. Once we're over that one, I believe that's the last of the big rocks, so to speak, the data conversion on the financial side. On the um, payroll employee relations side, I believe that we will still find some issues once we get to parallel payroll testing. What exactly they're going to be, I do not know, but I do believe that there will be some there. I do know that there is a, um, efforts currently in order to make sure that the errors between the in PeopleSoft currently between Kronos and PeopleSoft are being minimized so that when we do get to parallel payroll testing we have as clean an environment as possible so that we are actually comparing apples to apples and we're not dealing with Kronos issues or telestaff issues or anything of the sort. So from a business perspective, we are definitely prepping up in order to make sure that this will go as smooth as possible. Will we find something? I'm pretty sure we will. That's why we do parallel payroll tests. What? I don't know. Thank you. That's actually very helpful. The other questions, Kate, go ahead now. So I'm going to append to um, Ann's comment a little bit, Mr. Chairman, in that um, we're looking at um, how to load budget information. That analysis is uh, stopping further implementation of the mock two right now because we're trying to decide how we're going to gather the data out of PeopleSoft and load it over into SAP. And the PeopleSoft data, as you probably have heard many times, is convoluted and aggregated and challenging to get over into SAP. When you designed SAP, you put in a lot more detail about what you want to see that will make reporting and auditing a lot easier. So when the SAP system with what you have in PeopleSoft right now if you please forget the analogy but it's the best way for me to explain to myself what's happening you have a stew it's a beef stew it's got vegetables and corn and meat and broth in SAP you have kind of columns for each one of those ingredients so you have to take that stew that's been made up and you have to pull out the carrots and put it in the carrot column pull out the beef and pull out the broth and you'll be much happier at the end of the day that you've done that because you'll be able to audit faster and maintain your books and records better. That process is very challenging in almost every way and, and that is why Mott in part is going so long as best I can explain to you. Um, so what we're working on is talk about SAP quality assessment pretty soon. We got to figure out how we're going to do that. Another issue is in PeopleSoft, the data could be wrong. So that you have um, $10 sitting in Fund 101, but really $8 belongs in 131 and only $2 belongs in 101. The implementers that we hire, their job is to build a bridge between PeopleSoft and SAP. They want to construct a very good bridge that takes that $10 and puts it in SAP. Functional people want to say, wait a minute, we want to look at that $10 and make sure it's right. Because we don't want $10 crossing over your bridge and going into SAP and being $10 wrong. So there's tension between whether you do that, what we call cleanup and mapping now, or whether you put it into SAP $10 and then spend the time to get it right. And we have to give clear leadership on what we want them to do. My inclination, because I lived through PeopleSoft, as did um, Ms. Greg Jackson and others, is to, is to get it as best you can before you put it in SAP. However, you know, we have to be open to what other people are telling us. So we're going to spend time, and things are going to slow down while we find those answers to know how we should move this forward. Mr. Stevens, 
Steel, sir. Uh, yes. Is it just one-time correction, uh, or are you are you converting the people soft to the SAP format? I mean, is it is it just one point in time? Um, we've been using people soft all this time. Can't you just draw the line and say, okay, this is done, uh, so. and then start off with SAP? But the problem is you don't know what's carried forward with this person. Um, through the chairman, this difficulty happens on these carry forward projects like grants yeah. and uh, pro construction projects. So these are the areas where you want to have the data go in. And you've got to make a decision. How is your data going to feed over there? Ms. Ray Jackson has a question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you, Ms. Guard. Um, and I understand the beef stew. No. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry about that. I no, 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 it's okay. okay. It's okay. I understand it piece by piece, yeah. And then you made the comment that things are going to slow down. Can you <coughs> talk about that a little bit? Well, uh, through the chair, I believe that you had a certain period of time that you anticipated for mock, for mock 2 to happen. What you're seeing is we've only gone from 52 to 66. So we've had a month, and we thought we'd be done by now. So I was trying to give you an explanation of why you would only go that small percentage. And I do not know, I don't like to say that word anymore, but um, so no, further no. information will be forthcoming. Can I follow up, Mr. Chairman? Go ahead, ma'am. No, um, I'm not glad that things are going to uh, slow down, so to speak. But it's, um, uh, I'm glad that you informed us that things are going to slow down because it's going to give us time to have our independent review. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Garrett. Continue, ma'am. Thank you. So that's um, that slide. So what we wanted to talk to you about was project financials. So that's the next slide. I'm not really sure how much um, detail you've gotten in product financials. So the controller is now, Tom Fink is going to be taking over, kind of managing the financials of the project and making sure that you know, we can know instantaneously where we stand. Um, so professional services spent to date, professional services are B&B, Black of Beach, uh, Peloton, you know, anybody outside of the MOA. Contributed labor is your what's called the people working within the MOA. Software um, is the SAP licensing. Software maintenance is a maintenance fee, pay on licensing, training. The rest of it is probably um, self-explanatory. I didn't, I learned this this morning, we cap we're capitalizing loan interest. That's a traditional, typical thing you would do. I just wasn't aware that we were doing it. So there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and then other um, part of that was the quality assessment that occurred. Just a bunch of smaller stuff. It went too long, so I put it in other. We can give you more detail on that if you want. So that gives you, if you go back just for a sec. So when I looked at this slide, I thought encumbered $4 million. If you're going and asking the assembly to approve another $3 million, but you got $4 million encumbered, why are you asking them for more money? So I wanted to show you what the encumbrance breaks down to. So now you can go to the next slide. So we have encumbrances, that means commitments that we've made, and contractual commitments. Black and Beach, we have a million dollar final payment due them on 1231. Um, and then we're uh, 312,000 uh, encumbered for consulting services that they're providing us. There may be some room in there because um, their last consultants are leaving, but I didn't take it out because I've got to get all the final bills. Peloton, we have 1.248 million of encumbrance with Peloton, but it's broken into two components that are really not spendable for us. It's retention, we will have withheld retention from them on regular payments that we've made, and then deliverables. So their contract, and I show you a little bit later, is comprised of monthly payments, uh, reten minus retention, and deliverables. That means they get paid when something's finished. Um, so there's no more money for monthly payments. Resource data, I'm afraid to bring it up, but they are the project manager that you've had for a long time and my former employer, but they're doing the project management associated with this. And part of the reorg plan, you saw that we put more project management in the plan, and that is going to come to the extent that we can from resource data. Um, UTL, 
that's a company that you approved of the other last week, 110,000. That's for FERC reporting and all the FERC work that you've heard about recently. Uh, Steve Barnes? Dean Barnes. Dean Barnes is a project manager. He's in control of the project plan. Um, so his is 18. Those are encumbrances against. Improvisations is the Kronos people that we had working on Kronos. I can't remember who Business Technology Solutions is, but they're all small contractors that are working on the engagement. So those are commitments that we have. Some of that money may have been spent. The million dollars we know is a check that we need to write before December 31st. So that's why, um, so that's where, where we stand with encumbrances. Are there questions on that? Because it was a little confusing for me. Mr. Great Jackson has a question. Mr. Brosky has a question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I'm not going to read everything again, but um, Peloton, they're our project managers, correct? They are. Uh, yeah. No, they're our integrator. They're the system integrator uh, through the chair. Right, but I thought that they were, you know, that the title was project manager just like Black and Beach was. You know, um, and then with, the, with that comment, you know, and then we've we got another project manager with resource, we've got another project manager with business technologies. Um, and uh, it just concerns me a little bit. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Dembrowski. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Guyer, thank you for doing this uh, breakdown of the encumbrances for the professional services. This is very, very helpful. I would also like to see, uh, if you could send it to us, a breakdown in the same fashion for contributed labor. Because what I'm looking for is I want to see from where in the municipality all, these, all, all this labor is being pulled. That would be helpful. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions with some of members? Before you before you continue, I just want to um, remind you that Mr. Train and I sent um, about eight questions, mm -hmm. and I didn't really think you would have them today, but we would really like to have them as soon as possible. So, when do you think we'll be able to get the responses to those questions? Um, through the chair, that document is final and in my oh, in my office for review. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. It was so, supposed to be to you this morning, but I just ran out of time to do it. Right. Well, thank you. I'm glad that they're ready for us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Ms. Geyer. So next is future financing. Um, and why I went forward at this moment with a $3 million increment when we have encumbrances. And I hope to have explained well enough, why, even though Peloton has $1.2 million on their contract, it's not spendable. So. Peloton um, has a contract before us, which I have approved, which pays them $500,000 $500, a month. And they were being paid $400,000 a month. And I have a Peloton contract down below a little bit. So they are, that's October, November, and December. Um, so that is the contract commitment we would have to Peloton should you approve both that contract, which is before you, and the $3 million increment. Can you just repeat how much were you paying a month? Or five hundred thousand. Perfect. They were the contract stated they were four hundred thousand, and they picked up additional resources from B and B. When B and B left. They we pulled and required uh, Peloton to put more resources on the contract. That's why it went up a hundred thousand dollars. And Ms. Gray Jackson has a question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, does that five hundred thousand include what, in the middle of this month, October? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so then October, November, and December, the 15, 1.5 million will be up. And the project is exposed phase one or whatever it's called in January and then not until April. So that means that they're probably going to be needed another 500000 each month from January to April. Yes. So that means another budget, another amendment. Yes, coming there, forward. there will okay. be another increment coming forward. Um, I wanted to get the quality assessment done in the 60-day period to give you a whole, what I estimate the whole project budget to complete is. So you're correct. This is really just to get us through the fourth quarter at this moment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Please continue. Um, the SAP quality assessment, which you've heard about, we're going to talk about a little bit more, um, as is three quarters of a million dollars. We have SAP licenses that we're acquiring and project management. Um, costs that we anticipate to incur in the fourth quarter, bringing us to $3 million. 
So I do want to address, if I may, Mr. Chairman, very briefly why uh, we have project management, if, if, if I could answer your question, Ms. Fred Jackson. Um, so third-party project management is a tool that is used to better, um, better, better manage the project. The implementers, as best I can tell you, the implementers are technical people. They work on programming. They don't, they aren't, and they won't manage the MOA resources. So you end up with two silos. You have the functional resources, and you have the implementer technical resources. <coughs> In the structure that we have at the Muni, um, generally you need project management to make all of that work together. So we don't have within the Muni the project management resources because we're not structured that way. So you bring in a third party project manager to bridge the gap between the technical implementer and the functional staff. So that's when I um, looked at this structure that we had, I pushed project managers over each module. Um, and then when SAP does its quality assessment, part of its job is to look at our project management itself and see if you know what I put out isn't right, we got to do it a different way. But having a third party project manager is a, a not an uncommon way of managing the project. And I know that most people would expect the implementer to do all of that. But I wouldn't recommend that as a successful model. Mr. Dombrowski, I have a question for you, Madam. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so when we're looking at the future financing project management, we are not talking about resource data, barns, or business technology solutions. We are looking at a completely separate additional project manager. Is that, is that what you're saying? That $225,915 would go towards? I actually, I think that it would go to those project managers and possibly others, like a project manager over reporting. But um, I haven't. I had a schedule that I gave you, which I didn't bring you, that laid out like project managers I felt were needed, right. and we haven't staffed up to that level because um, we just. I haven't had a chance to bring them all in, and I wanted to be sure we were going to move forward with the increment before I committed more resources to this project. Okay. Whether they come from RDI or individual PM or other companies, and just to follow up for Peloton. Can you answer for me in the other cities where you've been successful? Um, have you yourself been the project manager and the implementer, or what is your typical strategy when you come into a city like this and you inherit this lovely basket of goodies? Sure. Uh, what, what's been typical for us uh, has been uh, definitely there's a project management component to help guide and manage the project. Uh, one of the one of the things that, that Kate had identified very quickly when she got on board was that it's not necessarily that top project manager that that was understaffed but there's a layer underneath it that really manages the team every day and and you can call those project managers over those critical areas like one over reporting like Kate had mentioned and what we've really been struggling with and Kate identified that right away is there's a middle layer of management that actually manages the, the you know the muni staff every day to make sure they're on track and they're on target they're getting quick business decisions and that sort of part the part that the integrator doesn't do it doesn't really manage the, the the specific resources of the customer that way so at the other cities we've had a very similar project manager structure at the top but there's been more resources at the other cities to manage the, their own staff in the middle that is very helpful thank you Mr. Gray Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, I remember, I don't think I dreamt it, but didn't Peloton, Peloton do a quality insurance project last year sometime? Okay, so then my question is, how is what Peloton did last year different than what we're asking SAP to do now? Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Be glad to address the front of that briefly through the chair. At the time that we were in transition from Black and Beach, um, and we hadn't made a decision which we were going, there were actually a couple of very small, many quality assessments that happened at that time. One was we asked Peloton to come in and do an assessment of where the project was and what it would take to complete. At the same time, Black and Beach sent a senior executive up here to, in parallel, 
do exactly the same thing. And they really basically came back with, in the end, the same results and the same overall cost to complete the project at that time. So uh, we, I think we have supplied in the past to the assembly, but if not, I, I would be glad to get both reports from that period. Um, but, but those efforts were completed, uh, and one by us, uh, you know, at our direction, Peloton completed it, one where Black and Beach simply brought their own team in because of where they were in the project, where it was supposed to go live, but we're very far away. Question is, Amy? No, I don't really think the question was entirely answered. Okay, no. continue on. Um, through the chair, Ms. Gray Jackson, I consider what we're asking SAP to do for the three quarters of a million dollars is a detailed audit of every module for three or four weeks, have boots on the ground, look at the system, look at the uh, documentation that we have, just really get into the roots of this system right now and find out why we're not able to move forward at the speed everyone likes. That's very different, I believe. Can I follow up? Just, okay. So I heard that there were going to be some representatives from SAP here today. Um, I was well, trying I, to get through my presentation real quick uh -huh. so that I could give you like 20 to 25 minutes to talk to them. Thank I'm you. almost done. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Kate. Go ahead, Beth. We can just flip them. So you don't have to look at this now. I just wanted you to be able to see the Peloton contract. You'll see the three months, October, November, December. But I also wanted to give you a sense that we were paying them about 400000 a month. And then um, uh, we did an extension, and they accepted 150000 a month, which I believe was below cost. And now we're adding more resources and requiring them to provide more resources. So uh, we came up on the monthly payments. And the three monthly payments we want to focus on are 13, 14, and 15. But if you spend some time with this, you'll see that the, uh, the whole back adds up to the 585, and then those are the deliverables down below. So we go on. This is the SAP quality assessment. I wanted to give you a sense of the amount of hours the people are going to be on the ground. This is currently in negotiation. This is not a final but 120 hours of people on the ground for each module. And, and I gave you, I think, a sense already um, of the reporting that we want out of it, but that, that's what's there. Our next slide. This is licensing, and we uh, had an audit or an evaluation of our licensing. And I think perhaps we've known for a while that we needed to do um, more licenses. And we are in negotiation with SAP about licensing. They've given us an 85% discount off the license and other um, <coughs> benefits that Gail can talk to you about uh, if we sign on or before October 31st. <coughs> they wanted that before September 30th. They gave us an extra month. And then if you go on. Um, so I thought under the discussion, um, we could introduce the SAP team unless you have any questions for me, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, any questions, ma'am? We have about 25 minutes to finish this segment up, so. Questions? Okay. Thank you, Kate. I'd like to introduce you to the SAP team. And perhaps you could, I don't know your last name, so perhaps you could. Uh, <laughs> understand the status of a project. Uh, mainly there's two main services that we provide. One to understand the overall project, as Kate said. Uh, what's the status of the project management? What's the governance like? What's the training? Uh, 
project management hygiene. And then we also do a what we call a design review or solution review where we actually look under the covers of your system and see what has been uh, completed to date and if that meets SAP standards and you know, good practices and it will it meet your, your goal for what you would like to see at the end of the, of the project. Yeah. Gentlemen, either side of you. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Jeff Daniels. I'm VP of our delivery organization for state and local governments, education, and healthcare. Um, our particular group um, has consultants that would actually um, work under Norma's team for this engagement, this QA engagement. So the subject matter experts uh, in many of the areas we have. Hi, my name is Tom Novosel. I'm a client partner with SAP. I'm working with Jeff and Norma um, as we go through this. Thank you. Ms. Gray Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome to Anchorage. I don't you. remember seeing you. But anyway, so, okay, so you don't work? You're not employees of SAP? Yes. You, yes. you are or you aren't? We are. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I got confused. Seven, 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 okay. So you're like a division of SAP, something like that? No, we're SAP America. Okay. Because I really got confused because I, I thought that you said something different. Okay, so you are SAP employees. Okay, and SAP is the software that the city bought. The Valley Language bought. Okay. So, you're going to get paid $750,000 to do a quality assessment of everything that's happened in the last, what, two, almost three years. So, um, tell us what you're going to do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome, Pam. Let me go to Amy first. Amy? Uh, well, I'm just going to piggyback on that because my, my um, I wanted to understand entirely what the entire cost is for you to perform this service of this type of audit, let's call it. Or, um, and how long it would take. And I think it would tie nicely into Ms. Gray Jackson's question about how you, how you perform those functions. You can answer the questions from our assembly members, that will get started. Okay. Um, so what we do is we have the quality assurance director that actually heads up the team that will come in and do this independent assessment. And we will work with Kate and her team to understand what areas of the system that we want to investigate and to assess. So we've been working with her to understand that and how many people that will take to do that. From that, we um, form a team of senior level type consultants that will come in and um, be here with the quality assurance director. And they will perform interviews. And they will already look at your documents that you already have be prepared before they come um, to Anchorage. Once they're here, they'll be performing interviews with, with the team members, the project team members, and understand the status of your system, where you are today. Where does it sit today? How is it configured? How is it going to meet your business requirements? From that, we will develop a report that will show the findings that we discovered through these interviews and looking at your system and looking at your documents and understanding, of course, these are high-level consultants that understand the SAP software. That's what they do all day long. And they will then look at the findings and then make recommendations that are you headed in the right direction? And if so, you get a good report on that particular subject. If not, then we'll make recommendations on how to improve or what to change. And um, is it a high risk for your project? Is it a medium risk <coughs> or is it low risk? So we'll give you some indicators on what the severity of the finding is. From that, we'll, deli we'll deliver a report, and we'll, um, we call it a debrief, and we'll debrief the assembly if you would like. Uh, of course, Kate and anyone else that wants to, to sit in on that. <coughs> From that, we will develop a response plan, and that response plan will outline all the recommendations that we found and that we make. And then we'll prioritize those to decide you should be implementing these recommendations first second and third, so it will support your go live date. So if I may follow up? Yes, thank Because I didn't really have the answers to my questions. So the, the total cost, what you anticipate is $750,000, is that right? That's currently what is being projected. We are working with Kate today to finalize what we think the number of consultants would be and how long we think it would be. Right now we think it's a three-week type of engagement. And it, it would take three weeks to do this. Right. And um, typically when you do this type of project, um, are you paid on completion of the report? We're, we're paid as the 
on a monthly cycle. So if it takes three weeks, then at the end of the, you know, we'd be at the end of the month and it would be paid at that point. Thank you. Mr. Ray Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, okay, so how many other cities have implemented SAP and then the uh, SAP has a quality assessment team go out and, and do exactly what you said in the How many other cities have as far as, as usual? As far as the number of cities, I, I have to give you a, an exact count that they're you know, worldwide in the hundreds, right. if, if, not, if not more. The actual number of quality assessments at, at cities, we have to check globally, but it's a, it's a typical practice. Okay, so for a little bit of clarity on my question. So it's typical for SAP to after things don't seem to be working out, like we have in this community, for SAP to, to go in and do a quality assessment? Not, not just for... Because that's kind of what I'm getting at. You know, how often do you go into cities and do quality assessments because there are issues? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, ma'am. Questions from anybody else? Oh, I'd like her to answer Okay, that. go ahead, ma'am. <laughs> I wasn't sure it was a rhetorical question or not. <laughs> None of my questions are rhetorical. We have a program where if a customer would like to have a quality assurance program built into their project. So let's say, let's, say, let's take this, the, municipality, the municipality of Anchorage, that we could have a program where we come in and on a periodic basis we come in and do these independent assessments while you are using someone like Peloton to do your implementation. It doesn't have to be because the project is going off schedule. It's quality assurance. It's like asking a, uh, if you're building a house, to have an electrician to come in and certify your electricity, right? So if you've got small issues within, within the house, it's not going to burn your house down, you can still move in, you're okay, or this particular circuit is really in bad shape, it could cause a fire, or this particular circuit breaker will cause a fire, don't move in. So it's, it's an assurance program to go in and review the project. It doesn't have to be that projects are going off track. Yes, are we called in when projects are going off track? Yes. Um, but we do just as many where projects aren't going off track just to have that assurance to avoid it from going off track. Does that make sense? Probably more, really. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Yeah, but I have a lot of questions. Okay, Amy, we have another four, 15 minutes. You've got lost time. Oh, so boy. So I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to settle right in. schedule in this till 3.30. <laughs> we can go over than that. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Um, wait, I have a question for you. In some of the other cities where you've dealt with implementation, specifically of SAP, have you you've worked with a quality assurance team, and have you been, um, have this has this been a component of other implementations? Yeah, I've, uh, I've seen a lot of different implementations, cities and other public sector organizations. Uh, some of them, as, as you know, we've, we've actually come in to help um, along with the teams to, to take something over that hasn't gone so well. Um, a lot of times, you know, what has preceded that has been a QA assessment to determine where exactly are we starting from. Um, if I could answer your, in your earlier question a little bit, too, is uh, you know, what, what Peloton did originally back in the fall of last year. So it was not a three-week deep dive design type of assessment. Uh, what we had done as the request of the muni at that time was really assess where is the project, confirm where, where was the completion, how was the project plan, was it in the right sequence, what needed to be done. And what we did is took over at that point on the request of the municipality and put all of the right structures and procedures in place and got into detailed testing so we could really get into that level of detail to see where things were. And yes, there were some surprises beyond what our assumptions were when we did that. Uh, but in our experience with the other cities where we, we have come in to help them afterwards and been part of that team, uh, some of them had a QA service that they just used irrespective, you know, kind of what uh, Norma had mentioned. Some of them just have a QA vendor and they're there with them for the entire project and they're just an extra set of eyes on things. It might just be one person who's there part time. There's different ways of doing that. Uh, to do the whole sort of design QA, you know, the benefit of that is is that you're going to have the, the group that owns the software look at it and give you the, the confirmation that it either is working or isn't working. So and they're, not, they're not associated with Peloton, they're not associated with the Muni, but they do know their software. And that, that is the advantage of doing that. 
the, the scope of, of how much you do is really a decision for Kate and the assembly and others, but that, that's really been how that's used at other cities when I've seen it done. Thank you. Thank you. I, last question. <laughs> I keep saying that today. Okay, so that leads me to one of the concerns I have is we heard from some in the municipal uh, level that they are not sure that SAP can handle some of uh, some of um, our complicated union contracts and some of the different pay mechanisms within that. So my concern as a legislator is now we have the vendor of the software auditing something we're being told by an independent source maybe not capable of doing what we think it is so it's kind of like you're checking you're, you're checking your own work and you know it gives me a little bit of pause so can you comment on that I, I'd really say quite the contrary I, I understand but it's a good question and I fully understand the, the logic behind the question but, but in reality it's really quite the contrary for, for brand protection we need our software to succeed, and uh, and we need you to be successful. So if, if during this analysis we find that there is functionality that, that you need to the municipality that we're not able to fulfill, we'll be the first ones to stand up and say, we need to find a different solution for this part. Because it would do us no good to implement it, not meet your expectations. Anymore. So if, in fact, that's the case, would the burden be on the municipality to pay for you guys to develop that, or would that be something SAP we, we really have to wait for the end of, of this analysis to see if we even have this issue. I, I, I'll say this, uh, you know, the software is is deployed in, you know, like I said, hundreds of cities worldwide with literally in every region of the world, uh, many of them with very unique circumstances. Um, we'll see if, if this is an issue. Uh, it, 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 it's uh, it would be highly doubtful you know, that the software is highly configured. But, but we can give you a better answer after this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rosen. Kate, at 330, 329, I'm going to ask you another question. I want to know what day this goes live. Okay? And you've got. <laughs> 10 I have to go to, to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and I've already heard stories of people behind you when it's going live. I want to know from you, Mr. Evans. Oh, uh, yeah, and maybe this is. Uh, just filling in my background on, on how we got to from to here from where we started um, but I was a bit intrigued by uh, the gentleman from Peloton when you said after following the Q&A that you guys did initially which wasn't a deep dive just kind of getting things in place uh, you mentioned that there were some surprises I, I would just like to know what some of those surprises were just so I have a complete picture probably the best example is uh, what I'll call development work so development work are things like interfaces and forms and these things you, it's not actually part of the software, you just configure, you have to have programmers and developers add this to make everything work. And uh, you know, through discussions with the team at that point, and this was with the B&B group as well, uh, I won't get the numbers exactly right, so give me a little bit of leeway, but there was about 315 of these development items, of which 56 weren't completed yet. What we found out is that there was probably about 250 of them weren't really complete yet and Peloton kind of just did whatever it took to get that stuff done. So you're over that crisis part, but that, that's kind of some of the things that we found. It, it was similar with what we do call configuration. You know, the assumptions that we had was that the software was configured to the state of business requirements. We were gonna come in and test it, fix it. You know, we found that there's things that just weren't even configured at all. You know, and the only way to discover that was when we put a proper integration test together and got through those script integration tests, it fleshed all this stuff out. So for the most part, I mean, we just did whatever it took to get through that crisis. And the crisis is a little bit different now than it was then. It's more of a, you know, as we talked about earlier, getting the right people in place now to push this over the finish line. You're not in the same position you were back when we started, but now you really need that horsepower focus to get over the finish line. Thank you. Mr. Steele, sir. Um, I don't know how far I should go down the path, but uh, I'm a little frustrated. you got nine minutes. <laughs> um, and I, uh, I think I see some things happening that worry me about the organization, and uh, and I don't think it's unique. Uh, we we go through a process of, of 
cutting back on labor. And then when we need the big project, we don't have the people with the management ability to manage the project. Uh, and so we hire a contractor to manage the project for us. And uh, the city's had problems with, with implementing uh, systems in the past. And I, and I just think maybe we ought to start at the beginning to say, I, I don't know. I don't know what the solution to it is, but uh, but we end up with these projects. We start and we're all happy and we're uh, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and we're excited. And then we start wearing people down because they're butting their heads against the wall. And uh, we don't have the resources necessary. Uh, we're staffed to a level of doing the job as opposed to doing the job and implementing the new system at the same time. And, and we just throw money after money, throw analysis after analysis. And, uh, and we're at it again. And it's been real frustrating. I've been on here two years now, I'm just about. And, and I, I saw problems with this at the beginning, and, and I still see problems with it. Um, and I think it's got a little bit to do with the fact that we're a government entity and we want to keep the personnel down to the minimum <coughs> and, and we just we want them to do the job, but then we have a project that's overarching uh, and bring them in. And they have the skills, they have the knowledge of the data, and so on and so forth. So, they're, you know, they should be involved. But it just goes on and on and you come out with a project, well, you know, our, our old system, I, I'm told, at the same problem where uh, we come out on the end and we're three times the cost and two times the, the, the estimated time and everybody's frustrated and mad and discouraged and uh, I just hate to see it. You know, to a certain extent we said we did the same thing with the port in terms of we turned it over to uh, federal government to, to implement because we didn't have the expertise and the skills to do it. And, and we didn't have, quite frankly, didn't have the ability to, to manage it, to, to keep our eye on the contractor and make sure that they were doing what they should be doing. And uh, didn't have the personnel or the skills. Anyway, I'm expressing frustration. And uh, I'm not, I know I'm not the only one that's frustrated. But uh, at some point in time, we the government need to staff and fund appropriately the infrastructure necessary to do the job. And I don't think we're doing it. Thank you. We're almost out of time. Ms. Gray Jackson, Ms. Dabrowski, and I've got a question for Kate. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. If I can ask. Say, make a comment, Mr. Steele. I'm not mad, I'm sad. Anyway, um, Peloton, we, is, is it still just two partners? Pardon me? Is it still two partners, you and I can't remember the person that the, the, Peloton. The, yes, the managing partners of Peloton are myself and Richard Banks sitting right here. Right, right. Yes. Hello, Richard. Okay, and so one of you worked, used to work for SAP, and one of you was contracted for SAP, right? That is correct. Okay. And then you did the Q and A last year, and you know it was hopeful that since you used to work for SAP, that things would be taken care of, and we wouldn't have to be paying another seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars for another group from SAP to come back into our community and do another another Q and A, and and that really concerns me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Dombrowski, last uh, question, ma'am. Yes, one is a comment. Uh, first thing, we never asked Wade to say his name on the record, so it may be helpful. No, certainly. Wade Hunter, Pelotonger. Thank you. And then, um, Kate, if you could, before the next meeting, it sounds like you might have a more definitive idea of exactly what the cost of this SAP group would be. That would be helpful. Uh, to the chair, a more definitive estimate of what the... What the audit would cost for them to come in. That would just be helpful before we actually take action on the item. Um, through the chair, I put a budget of um, 750000 The current proposal is 
seventy thousand plus travel. So I just put the so delta the to be travel. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. So okay, two things. What day are we going to go live? Mr. And Chairman, you said one. What, <laughs> uh, when are they going to be back to report to us? Because if they do the audit, if we approve the audit, then I want them to come to the assembly and report it to us. With all those pimples and high points in it, I want to know what they have to say. Because sometimes we pay for things that somebody never sees until much later. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, in the contract that we're negotiating with SAP today, we are requiring SAP to come back and do um, an interim assembly presentation and two follow-on assembly presentations and more um, interaction with the mayor with whom you know, these guys are contracting. Would you with our clerk then and set the time up so we know this is being done, the clerk will have the time available for that report. Yes, sir. Now, when is this going live, Kate? You're not getting out of here. <laughs> Bless you. Uh, I, I can't possibly tell you until we have the results of the, the SAP implementation. The reason I'm recommending it to you, Mr. Chairman, is that we need a pathway forward. And in the month that I've been here, um, I can't get deep enough provide the kind of independent assessment that you need to be able to tell you how we're going to proceed forward. We need more than an implementation date. If we run to an implementation date, Mr. Chairman, we're setting people up for failure. We have to allow them the time to resolve whatever issues there are. And we need to know what are, what's the whole population of issues in this implementation. And any date I gave you, Christmas, New Year's Day, just be pulling it out of the air at this point. Thank you, Kate. I appreciate that. I'm sure other people will appreciate it. Correct that. answer, Kate, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Another question from some members. This meeting is over with.